5.15 is on sustainable agriculture. Also, I don't know if you've noticed all the commotion in the background, but I'm babysitting a kitten, and kittens have a lot of energy. So I just want to apologize in advance for all the tiny crashes and zoomies that you may hear. But it's a kitten. You know, they're adorable. All right, in sustainable agriculture, our first goal is to prevent soil erosion. We can do that through contour plowing, which is tilling with the curves of the land. Because if you plow in just straight lines back and forth, it creates channels that can carry away the topsoil when it rains. Um, but if you're plowing with the curve of the land, you're not going to create that um, like unstable difference. And then, you know, then your dirt doesn't flow away. Terracing is very similar, or is a type of contour plowing, uh, but it's specifically alongside a hill. Uh, using windbreaks, um, you can use trees or fences to prevent crop or protect crops from wind. You know the guy. Sorry, he got in my lap. <laughs> also using perennial crops, so crops that can be harvested for multiple years. So that means that you don't have to replant every single year. You'll still have a, um, it can still be harvested the next year and next year. So that way you don't have to disturb the soil every year. Also, no tilling or low tilling. So tilling, remember, is the fluffing of the soil. So if we don't fluff the soil, then it doesn't get loosened and exposed, and so that reduces erosion. Um, that also leaves behind things like dead crops, which can be a source of fertilizer for the, the next year's crops. You also use strip cropping, which is planting different crops in each row. Our second goal in sustainable agriculture is to improve the soil fertility. So another issue with with like things like monoculture um, or just using that soil over and over is we deplete those nutrients and then our crop yield eventually goes down because we have to, like our nutrients goes down and that's why then people have to add fertilizers to it to make those nutrients go back up. So some techniques you can use to help with that are crop rotation. So crop rotation, every year we grow something different, and then you usually have a year of not growing anything at all. And so the reason we might grow something different is because each one takes something different from the soil and then maybe gives something to the soil. And so we change what it needs and what it gives, so therefore we're not taking all the same things from the soil. Um, and Sometimes we're actually putting things back into the soil. Using green manure, which is made of plants that are plowed back into the soil, so kind of go, going back to what I was saying before with leaving behind the dead crops, using that as a source of fertilizer, or using cover crops as well, and then pulling those back into the soil. As the use of limestone increases the pH, which uh, in turn helps the plants take up nutrients and limestone is also a source of calcium. And then if we go back to the to livestock, remember livestock if as they're grazing the field, they can just they can totally destroy a field because that's all their their goal is is to eat grass. And they don't think about, well, maybe I should only eat this much grass per day so that this grass can grow back. They just can't do that. So we have to do that thinking for them. And we can do that thinking for them using rotational grazing, which puts them in a different pasture, um, you know, like in either a year or over years, depending on the size of the field, to um, avoid overgrazing of a particular area. So they'll eat on one before it totally, completely gets dead. They'll move them onto another pasture so that pasture has time to recover, and then they'll kind of rotate through those four um, four more areas so that those nutrients can rebuild and the grass can regrow and all that. With sustainable agriculture though, we don't have as much yield, so the benefits of industrial agriculture is when you pump a lot of fertilizer and cover it with pesticides, you get a lot of food, and that's great because we have a lot of people. So with sustainable agriculture though, you don't have as much food, and so that's both um, a problem for the farmer because that means they have less to sell and for the consumer because they have less to eat. Technology upgrades can also be expensive, such as drip irrigation. Um, 
and that's kind of a big trade-off because if you you're putting a lot of money into this this equipment that you need but then you don't have a much yield it, it has to be something you're really passionate about and something that's really important to invest that in you have to have a good a good plan to be able to make that money back you also need more human labor um with sustainable agriculture as well there's this less of a um less use of i'm sorry fossil fuels right. and in summary describes sustainable agriculture and food production practices